Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on what is popular culture. And in this mini lecture, we're going to take a look at why a class on popular culture is relevant and important. What do we mean by popular culture? How do we explore popular culture? And look at a very brief example of why it's important or a, a brief case study. So let's start off first with this question of why a class on popular culture. I think one reason it's important is because we as individuals are immersed in popular culture. It goes on all around us. We have popular culture on our bodies. If you're watching this online, you are probably watching this on YouTube, which is its own part of the larger popular cultural landscape. It is just everywhere to be found around us. And we, we participate in popular culture in a myriad ways by what we choose to watch or don't watch or what we listen to or don't listen to, what we read or don't read, uh, what we buy or don't buy. And so so it's, it's a very big subject uh, and one that doesn't often get studied in the college environment. We're also confused about popular culture. And what I mean by that is we identify some things as popular culture, we identify other things not as popular culture, we get confused about its value or lack of value, we think it's important, we don't think it's important, um, we have some real struggles around what it is, what it isn't, why it's important, why it isn't, is it a threat, isn't it a threat, is it the sign of the end of you know civilization as we know it, that we have all these questions about popular culture, which of course makes it a great topic of study. And I think also important is popular culture is interdisciplinary. Uh, that is, we have the opportunity to take to study it from many different vantages. We can study it from a historical perspective, a sociology, sociological perspective, an economic perspective, uh, a theor theoretical perspective, from a literary perspective. There's a lot of different ways we can study the subject matter, which means there's a lot of different ways we can understand it. And then I think also why a, co why a class on, on popular culture is important is studying popular culture requires complex thought. And by now, if you've looked at some of my other videos and other, my other content in this course, you know this is something I come back to time and again. This popular culture may appear superficial, but in order to understand what it involves and how it's connected to our our history and legacies around identity and culture, um, it's very complex. It, it is not simplistic and hopefully the example that we look at at the end of this video will bring that to the front. So now the question is what do we mean by popular culture? Well let's break that word down a little bit. First we have the word popular and there's, you know, we can see or at least within this video we're going to really identify three kinds of popular. The first is when we understand popular as inferior due to its availability, right? So if something is very popular, plastic bags are popular, but they're also seen as inferior because of course they are everywhere. Um, so when we think about that, we think of something that is so mass produced and available that it becomes you know, inferior. It's not seen as good. So we see this online with the availability of content. You know, people offering free material, it becomes less valuable. We also have popular as in the form of intentionally seeking attention. Right? This is the idea that, you know, something is trying to get people interested. And these, you know, you could actually look at, in reality TV, a lot of the people applying or, or trying out for things such as, you know, America's Top Model or uh, American Idol or, or any of those, they are seeking attention. They are trying to achieve popularity. People who, you know, are on Twitter, say, and are trying to get followers. They are uh, trying to become popular. Um, and then we also have popular, which is, you know, just liked by a lot of people. And this can be, you know, a particular celebrity. This can be a book, right? The, the Twilight series is liked by a lot of people. Now, some people are going to, you know, view, some people may think of Twilight as popular with regard to the first definition, but it is liked by a lot of people. It makes millions of dollars. We also have this term culture, and we really understand that there's kind of two 
forms of culture that we're thinking about here. The first is highly valued representation of a people's culture. The pyramids, the Statue of Liberty, right? When we talk about culture, we, we are sometimes talking about the actual artifacts or key representations. So, you know, the flag that was put on the moon when American astronauts went off into space. That is that is culture of a sort. That is a representation of, you know, the United States and its history and its power and influence. But then we also have culture as the traditions, artifacts, and perceptions created by a people who generally share a geographic region of the world. And so here we're talking about language. Right here, we're talking about you know in American culture, the you know turning 16 is important because you get you know you can get your license, and when you get your license, that embodies freedom, and freedom is part of you know a strong element of American culture. We also have just different way you know different things that we expect around different rituals. Whether you know what is the American wedding, what does that look like in terms of our culture? those kind of things. So popular culture actually pulls all of this together which makes it even harder to fully understand. Um, in this I mean that you know it takes this idea of popular, it takes this idea of culture and now it forges them together in that can feel a little contradictive or challenging because we're dealing with multiple you know when we look at popular we have availability we have attention seeking we have liked by a lot of people whereas culture seems you know at least in this context is supposed to be more dignified not as reproducible and uh, part of this it doesn't matter whether it's liked or not that's tradition right it doesn't there there are some of these things in which there is some clashing that goes on so then the question remains, how do we explore popular culture? And within that is, of course, the sub-question, who decides what popular culture means to the audience? So one of the th we have to kind of understand what happens when we're talking about popular culture. And we first have to understand that individuals decide on what a popular culture product means to themselves. So I watch a TV show, I as an individual can define what it means to me. Now that's important because we often imply or we often say that no, 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 it's whatever the producers or the creators want it to be. So they create a show and how they want that show to be perceived is exactly how that show should be perceived. That doesn't always, or that doesn't often happen. You know, they create the creators and producers create a show, but then audiences and different audiences respond to it in different ways. Somebody watches a show and finds it. Somebody watches a show like Glee and finds it inspirational and hopeful. Somebody else watches a show. Uh, somebody else watches that same show, and because of their politics, because of their view set, see it as a threat to the moral fabric of our society because of the character, what the char who and what the characters represent. Uh, popular culture scholars try to connect pop culture products with a larger overlapping, reoccurring, multiple engaging themes. That's a lot. Um, that, that, that is probably not fully comprehensible at this stage in the course, and that's okay. Uh, but what the pop, pop culture scholar is trying to do is to look at something within popular culture and understand how it relates to the larger culture, how it relates to different themes within America, in this case in American history, but within the culture's history, within the culture's concepts and representations of identity, how it relates to, you know, the, the more cultural, the, the more acceptable cultural artifacts, you know, the, the literature, the capital L literature, and the sophisticate, sophisticated elements of culture. So that's one of the things popular uh, culture scholars try to do. They also try to connect and understand what that, that individual meaning is for many people, especially when there's a large group of people finding that same meaning. Um, popular, co popular culture scholars also analyze the connections, motivations, and experiences related to popular culture. So what they, they try to understand what is the meaning being derived by the creators, 
what is the me oh, sorry what is the meaning being created by or generated by the creators and what is the meaning being derived by the audience how is the audience experiencing it what's driving them to participate to engage to find meaning in popular culture and we do have to understand that such interpretations of popular culture are always contextual to time and place and ultimately subject to later popular sco culture scholars to pick apart. Now what I mean by this is how a author or how a, a, a popular culture scholar makes sense of zombie films in the 2000s today is is very contextual it is very reliant upon how the world exists today in this time and space so that popular culture scholar is looking at the the zombie films of the 2000s and he's making judgment calls he's making you know he's analyzing it but he's analyzing it only with what information and knowledge and understanding we have today 30 years from now because history will continue to move or because we will continue to move through history 30 years from now another pop scholar is going to look at that same rise of the zombie film and might have some very different conclusions because that person has a bigger view of what's gone on in the last 50 years and can connect it to different trends and different ideas all right so the three questions we're looking at with popular culture are who or what determines makes and creates popular culture in this day and age 2014 this is a fascinating question because the rise of the internet has changed some of our relationship around who or what makes determines and creates popular culture in ways we just did not perceive of before but this is a key question to be asking and be thinking about who are the creators, the makers, and you know who are the gatekeepers who determines what gets out there and what doesn't. How does commercialization and industrialization and technology influence popular culture? This is an important one within this course um, in part because this course is focused on sustainability and the green curriculum as mentioned in the syllabus but also because again we live in an age you're watching this video online. This video and the idea of me being able to create a video and share it out with my students and everybody else in the world did not exist 10 years ago or I'll say 15, the, to the degree that I, it can be shared and interacted with. This did not exist 10 years ago, certainly did not exist 15 years ago. Uh, and so, you know, we want to be thinking about how these, these things go hand in hand with experiencing and, and engaging with popular culture. And then finally, what purposes does popular culture serve to the creators, consumers, and others involved in the dialogue around popular culture? So again, what do people get out of this? obviously within all of this money is exchanged this is all part of an economy without a doubt but take that question further and okay yes creators get money out of it but creators could get money out of a lot of things and when you talk to different creators they spend a lot of time not making money um, and sometimes you know just the luck out or, or kind of get one or two big hits so we want to think about what is it that people get out of this and why that's valuable for everybody involved. So I want to take a look right now at coffee as a good example because we think about coffee and we say yeah it's a beverage it's a drink I have it you know with the morning or I don't have it at all and we don't think of how coffee is a great example of popular culture we just think of it as you know roasted beans that get filtered with water and bam we've got our cup of coffee but of course we don't just get our cup of coffee do we we get our Starbucks coffee which is of course going to be different from that other brand or that other brand or maybe you really like McDonald's coffee or you like Dunkin Donuts coffee right you start to identify with a particular brand of coffee you won't just take one type of coffee of course, you may also engage with coffee at home and not just have a coffee maker, but have this Mr. Coffee Cafe Frappe. So you're not just going to have, you know, the, the standard cup of coffee, but now you're going to make things that are 
coffee-like. You know, you're going to make your cafe latte and, and your different drinks around that. So you're still basing it around the coffee bean, but now you're expanding and there's different ways to represent your identity through your drink. We also have the rise of coffee shops in the last 20 years as places you go and do things. So now here's a place that's focused on a product, coffee, but now it's also selling what's been referred to as third spaces, spaces that people go to to do things. Uh, I'm certainly guilty of this. I go and hang out at coffee shops all the time because it's a great place for me to get work done. But people go there for meetings, people go there to interact, to you know attend poetry slams. Uh, so then now we have coffee is not just something we drink, but now it's something we participate in. There's a routine of coffee, right? You go into a Starbucks and you know you get into the line, you order your drink, you move over somewhere to get your, your actual order. If you're sticking around, you may sit somewhere or you may peruse the things that are there. So you get more interaction going on here. But then there's also coffee on the go, right? This is, you know, in a, in a culture like ours, we're always grabbing our coffee and running. Um, or sometimes we have things like hubbub, which is our coffee coming to us, our coffee trying to, you know, get to us as quick as possible. We also start to go into canned coffee and we can get coffee in a can so we don't have to brew it we can just get it in a can just like we get our soda and you know if you're starting to see this picture now you're starting to say wow there's lots of different ways in which i identify with my coffee right there's also my iced coffee so that we start to balance out the seasons right in the winter in the colder months we get our our you know our hot drinks and in the warmer months we get our cold drinks including including our cold iced coffee right or if it's you know we know if it's in october and november we're going to get our pumpkin flavored coffee or we get our keurigs which are our little you know individualized coffee cup a coffee cup you know one little coffee cup just for me so i can make a me size i don't have to make a giant um pot full of coffee Right, so we see all of these different ways of engaging, and I'm just, I, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I could go on substantially around all the different ways coffee is prominent and present in our culture. Think about, you know, even something like driving now and all the coffee holder, co you know, off, all the places that you can put coffee because the expectation is you get coffee on the go because you're always on the go and you need coffee, and that certainly fills into itself regularly but kind of be aware that all of this relates to popular culture because this is how people are identifying you know we even say things like oh i'm a coffee drinker or i'm a tea drinker or you know insert i'm a this drinker so this is what we mean this there's, there's something to be valued here in studying this and understanding how people relate to coffee and popular culture because we can expand this and even look at well what about people who decide if I'm gonna drink coffee I want my coffee to be fair trade what does that mean and why is that important to some people how do they identify as fair trade coffee consumers so hopefully in this mini lecture uh, you've gotten some really good ideas or at least a starting approach to what is popular culture. Um, in this mini lecture we took a look at why a class on the popular culture, what do we mean by popular culture, how do we explore popular culture, and finally the example of coffee. Alright, that's all for this mini lecture. If you have any questions let me know and thank you for watching.